Welcome back. A uh, hundred points on the Nifty. Things are looking uh, pretty good with an hour behind us this Monday morning. Now, the ongoing Iran-Israel conflict has raised concerns in the global maritime industry, uh, causing supply chain disruptions. Uh, shipping container rates have surged uh, between 40 and 50 percent on a year-on-year -year basis. Let's talk about this more uh, and, uh, you know, whether this is going to worsen. Ajay Sahai is Director General and CEO at FIEO. Mr. Sahai, good morning. Great to have you with us here. Thanks very much. Uh, for your time. I mean, you know, that part of the world has been uh, not on the brink, but it's it's kind of been uh, seeing a bit of upheaval for the last year or so. Uh, and uh, now, of course, uh, you know, the fact that Iran and Israel looked like they were coming directly uh, sort of, you know, in, in confrontational mode, perhaps has raised tensions. But the impact on freight rates, etc., Mr. Sahai, if you can just sort of put this into context for our viewers. So, in fact, uh, for last one year or so, we are seeing huge challenges in the logistics, particularly after the Red Sea crisis. And we were hoping that Red Sea crisis may diffuse, but with the Iran attack on Israel and counterattack, which has been reported by Israel, the situation has definitely aggravated and it has resulted in some disruption of the shipping also. Shipping freight were already very much elevated. They are further expected to go up. And so has been the insurance. We are watching the development very carefully because if Iran stops the Strait of Hormuz, probably we may see some impact on the global oil and gas prices, particularly on the NLG prices. Uh, global oil prices have already moved up and they are expected to go up further. On the logistics front, um, we are expecting much disruptions. And in fact, a lot of exporters, they have already delayed the shipments. Much of the shipment which were expected to go in the month of March, they have been now moved over to the month of April and to some extent to the May also. So it's extremely uh, very worrying situation and we are concerned with the development. We hope that uh, the global diplomacy will prevail. The two sides will come to some kind of agreement so that there is ceasefire and ultimately the situation can be diffused. Okay, the situation can be diffused. But um, in the event that the Gulf of Hormuz is shut, right, uh, there is this worry that if things escalate, then the Gulf of Hormuz will be shut. But if that happens, what do you think the implications would be? And what are the alternatives now? So in fact, if the Gulf of Hormuz is set up, I think the problem will be with respect to the LNG supply, particularly from Oman, because there is no other route available. For other countries like UAE and uh, Saudi Arabia, they may be using the alternative routes. Uh, maybe the Red Sea, if the Red Sea is not working, everyone is going through the Cape of Goods Hope, but definitely it will increase the cost significantly. Secondly, as of now, the state of Hormuz, uh, they deal roughly with the 20% of the oil and gas cargo. Whether the other route will be able to accommodate that is also an issue. So in the given situation, we are looking into a northward movement in the prices of oil and gas. It may not impact India to that extent because we have the option of increasing our imports from Russia. But uh, I think the global oil and gas prices are all set to move up. But this is the impact is largely on uh, uh, oil and gas, uh, right? As you said, yeah. not on uh, container shipping, etc. So definitely container shipping, in any case, they are much elevated and they are expected to go up. We are uh, worried about not only the cost, probably there will be much disruption in the shipping schedule also. In fact, just after the Red Sea crisis, the shipping schedule has got haywire and exporter is struggling to provide the timely delivery and much of them have already moved to the air shipment and air freight in the last uh, six or month or so have gone up to some destination like Europe by 400%. So this is extremely uh, concerning. Uh, this is extremely dangerous trend. And we are hoping that it should not diffuse further. The world is just coming out of the COVID crisis. We have already suffered Ukraine-Russia war. There is a Red Sea crisis. And probably this is going to give a huge jewel to the global trade and the global economy. Okay, so what is the impact that you've seen on Indian companies so far, both in terms of, uh, you know, overall business as well as freight rates? No, uh, of course, uh, because of the high freight rate, uh, the bottom lines of the companies have been impacted and uh, so far exporters have been able to absorb that. The new contracts have been negotiated and luckily both the sides have agreed to bear a little bilge of punch and that's why we are not expecting exports to be impacted. 
But point is that if this escalates into a war, then the entire Middle East trade may be impacted, and Middle East is extremely important for us. Roughly 22% of international trade mm -hmm. happens with the Middle East countries also. So we we are just hoping that uh, the Israel and Iran comes to some kind of conclusion, and there is a ceasefire now because uh, if Iran further escalates or if Israel further escalates, it would be huge, huge blow. Okay. We have Sunil Vaswani, who is uh, the Executive Director at Container Shipping Lines Association, who is also joining in. Uh, Mr. Vaswani, thank you for joining the conversation. At your end, uh, you know, how are you reading this entire situation, both in terms of what the impact would be if this escalates, if the Gulf of Hormuz shuts down, what is the kind of cost escalation that we're looking at for the industry and for your own, uh, you know, for your own association? Yeah, all right. Morning and view. you. Uh, as things stand currently, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, countries like Saudi Arabia and Egypt are already impacted because of the practical closure of the Swiss Canal and the Red Sea and the Bab al uh due to the Houthi rebels. Uh, now, if this escalates, uh, then, you know, you could have a risk of the Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormos also getting impacted or practically, you know, uh, closed for that matter. And if that happens, a country like Saudi Arabia will be particularly impacted because it will be shut on both sides. So supply chains will definitely be impacted there. And also in countries like the other countries of the Persian Gulf would have problems, and particularly as far as the imports are concerned of, uh, of, uh, of essential commodities like pharmaceuticals, foodstuffs, etc. Uh, fortunately, as it seems that the response from Iran uh, to the Israeli uh, last Israeli attack has been rather muted, uh, verbally muted, and there will be no further action on that. So that said, uh, it gives some confidence that hopefully the situation will not escalate. Uh, but in the meanwhile, uh, but if it does, of course, then even the oil uh, supplies and all that will be impacted. But in the meanwhile, the insurance costs have already gone up as far as the shipping lines are concerned. Uh, you know, the war is premium earlier. It used to be 0.05% of the value of the ship. Uh, today has gone up to 1%. So for a vessel which costs about $100 million, uh, which is quite common uh, for, for a ship, uh, in fact, most ships even uh, cost more, uh, straight away $1 million is the cost of the war risk premium uh, that is applicable. And uh, though currently the situation in the Persian Gulf seems quite okay, but it is quite clear that any vessel having the remotest of uh, connection with Israel uh, could be the target. Uh, also, as far as the... Uh, disruptions are concerned, one must bear in mind is that different sizes of ships and different configurations uh, are available for different trade routes. And this constant disruption kind of, uh, you know, forces us to, you know, change those, interchange those vessels and then getting the right size of the vessel or the right configuration operationally as well as commercially in a new, new route uh, becomes quite challenging. Um, as things stand, you know, there has already been a certain amount of disruption as far as Europe and uh, the U.S. East Coast and Latin America are concerned because of the diversion over the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, obviously, this has increased the cost as far as the expenditure, capital expenditure is concerned, charter hire is concerned, feedering cost is concerned, crew cost is concerned, fuel cost is concerned, etc., etc. So, for instance, if on an earlier leg, same leg to Europe, if you are operating via the Swiss Canal, uh, a service with about nine ships would take 63 days for a round trip. Today, going over the Cape of Gudo, you need to add three more ships to be able to maintain that schedule, which, which is a weekly schedule, which was originally a weekly schedule. And that round trip takes 87 days. So what is happening is that we are putting in additional capacity, which is causing us, costing us uh, additional capital expenditure. Also getting ships, you know, at, at such, such short notice with frequent disruptions is quite a challenge, either internally through your fleets or through chartering from the market outside and the charter cost goes up and and eventually sure. what happens is that sorry uh, and one last point that like for instance to the to the, the point that's happened to europe that we are talking about is also some of the ports that were earlier serviced directly particularly to the east mediterranean ports those are now transship via feeder feeder uh, vessels so the feedering cost goes up and of course the transit time increases but the good side of it is that we've tried to shorten the trip for those direct vessels, you know. So, which means to North Europe, 
your transit time improves by about five to seven days. So these are the uh, kind of uh, technical star things that uh, one has to manipulate with these frequent disruptions. Thank you. All right, uh, you know, we're uh, out of time, uh, but uh, fascinating uh, always to talk about global shipping and uh, the complexities of it. Mr. Vaswani, thank you very much for joining us. Mr. Uh, Saha, it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure. And let's hope, fingers crossed, that things, uh, you know, don't flare up once again and that they quieten down uh, and, and get better uh, going forward.